Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Arma Guides. Today we'll be taking a look at the basics of the Eden Editor. The Eden Editor is a huge tool provided to us in Arma 3 that allows us to create our own content. The only downside to it is its vast learning curve. There's thousands of hours of content to it and it can be a little confusing at first. So in this guide I will be covering the few basics you will need to know. I'll be going over your camera controls, your editing controls, saving and exporting missions, and playing missions in single player and multiplayer. So let's go ahead and get right into this. The first thing you'll need to do is, of course, open the Eden Editor. There's two ways to do this. You can simply go to the single player tab up here and then select the editor from the dropdown, or you can push the big editor button right here in the center of the screen. When you push this button, it'll greet you with this menu where you can select the map for that particular editor. If you have modded maps, it will show up in this list. For the sake of this video, I will simply be using the virtual reality map. So let's go ahead and load this up. So once it is loaded, you are of course greeted with the map and you are simply a camera flying around a world that's frozen in time. Anything you place will be completely frozen in time, and all events will be frozen, and you are free to just move around, explore, place units, remove units, whatever you may need to do to create your missions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the controls for the camera movement. The Eden Editor camera's controls are quite simple, and they resemble that of infantry movement quite a bit. You can use W to move forwards, S to move backwards, A to move to the left, and D to move to the right. Q will raise your camera, Z will lower your camera, left shift will increase the speed at which your camera moves, left control will freeze your camera in whatever position you're in, and holding left control will completely prevent you from moving again until you release the button. This is great for getting your camera in super precise, precise positions when working on very small builds. You can hold down your right mouse button and drag around to change the direction the camera is facing. And you can scroll up with your scroll wheel to move the camera forwards. And you can scroll down with the scroll wheel to move the camera backwards. E will hide the left menu here. R will hide the menu on the right. And Backspace will hide the entire HUD for the Eden Editor. And you simply push those buttons again to get it back. N will, of course, toggle between night vision, thermals, and your normal view. And M will open your map. In your map, you can simply select a position on the map and click with your middle mouse button on that position, and it will teleport your camera there. You can also right click and hit go here to teleport to that position. Light or hitting L will toggle the light for your camera. So if we switch this to night real quick, you can see it's pitch black. If I hit L, it illuminates the entire area around the camera. So this can be great if you're working on a mission where you're, you're focusing heavily on design and you need everything to be in night time to make sure your lighting and everything looks good. So this is great for actually being able to see what you're doing. And I use this feature quite a bit. It's very simplistic, but very, very helpful. That's pretty much all the basics for your camera movement. Now let's go ahead and take a look at your editing controls. Your controls for editing are also fairly simple. You can spawn a unit by double left clicking wherever you would like to spawn a unit, which will greet you with this menu. You can choose the faction, you can select different modules and triggers, you can choose vehicles. If you're spawning in vehicles, you can choose to place the vehicle with the crew already in it or without it. All sorts of different options. And then the, you just select your unit, hit OK, and it'll place it wherever you double left click. You have the same option over here on the right of your screen, except you drag and drop to place the unit. You have everything that was in the previous menu. You can place vehicles with crews in them. You have your modules, different factions and everything. You just drag with your left mouse button to place the unit. You can also hold left control while dragging and then repeatedly left click to place multiple units. You can drag across the screen with your left mouse button to mass select units. And then you can use delete on your numpad to remove these units. 
Same works for a singular unit. You can left click on a unit once to select it and then hit delete to remove it. You can also right click on a unit, go to edit and then hit delete. You can double click on a unit to get the unit's properties. This is all sorts of stuff for more advanced editing. Um, you can set the units to activate different lines of code whenever certain actions happen to them. You can change different states for the units. There's all sorts of information in here. I'll cover more in depth in the future. You can also right click on the unit, just like the properties of the unit. There's a lot here. I'll be going more in depth in the future. Right now, all you really need to worry about is go here, play as a character, and then your cut, copy, paste, delete, and then edit loadout and reset loadout. Now, another important thing to note is when dragging, you can right click to cancel that unit placement. Now you can hit control Z to undo any previous actions and you can hit control Y to redo any of these actions. You can also just click the buttons right up here in the top, but I find it easier to use the key shortcuts. You can select units and then hit control C to copy them and then you can hit control V to paste them. You can also select units and hit control X to cut and control V to paste. Now you can use your tilde key, the button next to one to access the debug console. This allows you to access animations and cameras and execute lines of code, all sorts of different things. This is a bit more advanced, but if you have a basic understanding of coding, you can use this fairly early on to do a lot of very interesting things. Whenever you have a unit placed, you can drag the unit around with your left mouse button to change where the unit is. You can hold left shift and drag with your left mouse button to change the direction the unit is facing. And you can hold left alt and drag with your left mouse button to change the altitude of the unit. An important thing to note is the unit will float in the editor, but whenever the mission actually starts, they will fall unless they are a vehicle capable of flight. If they are a vehicle capable of flight, they will spawn with their engines on at full power and they will continue to fly and avoid crashing. Now that's pretty much all the basics as far as placing and editing units. There is more advanced stuff, but you really don't need to go outside of placing, deleting, and changing the direction of props and soldiers and things along those lines. So I will be covering editing far more advanced in the future because there is a lot more to it. But starting out, that's really all you need to know as far as your controls go. Now let's go ahead and take a look at opening a mission and playing it in single player and multiplayer and things such as that. So actually testing a mission to make sure it is functioning as intended is a very important thing. And there are a few ways to go about this. The first is playing the mission in single player. To do this, you can go up to play in the top and you can select play in single player, or you can just hit the big play scenario in single player button down here. An important thing to note is if you have multiple units spawned in when using either of these two, it will either select the very first unit that was spawned or the highest ranking unit, unless the units are all grouped, grouped together, in which case it will automatically put you in control of the group leader. A way to get around this is to right click on the unit you would like to control and then select play as character. And this will start the scenario and you will have control over the character you selected. This is great for testing basic features of a mission, but if you're designing your mission with multiplayer as the main intent of it, then you're definitely going to want to test that. So to open a mission to multiplayer, simply go up to your play tab, go down to multiplayer, click this, and you'll be greeted with this menu. And you can just fill out the basic information and then hit OK. And this will start. This is fairly simple. You just choose your slot and then you can load in. If you have more soldiers set, then friends can choose their soldiers. They can choose their factions, all that type of stuff. I covered the process of port forwarding and setting up servers in my recent guides. 
I will have those linked down below. I recommend you go check those out because without port forwarding set up, no one will actually be able to connect to the server and that will make testing the server and multiplayer pretty much useless. So that's really all there is to it. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at saving and exporting missions. Saving and exporting your missions are also fairly simple tasks, but they are quite important. Of course, saving your missions prevents you from losing process progress whenever you have to close the editor or in the event of a game crash, things along those lines. And exporting allows you to save a mission as a finished file. So to do this, simply go up to scenario in the top left, and then from the drop down, select save. You can also use control S as a shortcut and it will save the scenario. Now, the first time you do this, it will greet you with a menu like this and you will have to choose a name and then you will hit save. And afterwards, anytime you hit save or you hit control S, it will automatically save overwriting the previous save on that file. You can do control plus shift plus S or simply hit save as, and this will create a new save that does not override the previous save. This is great if you're working with very experimental things and you want to save without overriding previous save because you're not sure if what you're doing is going to work or not and you don't want to have to go through the trouble of going back and completely redoing everything. I use this feature all the time. Now, exporting is the process of basically saving a mission as a finished file. You can export the single player, multiplayer, terrain builder, or to SQF. Terrain builder and SQF are far more advanced, and I'll be taking a look at those in the future. But for now, all we need to worry about is single player and multiplayer. First thing to note is before you can export to either of these, you have to have the mission saved and have given it a name. Now, once you have done that, you simply click one of these and it will export. And this basically creates a saved version of the mission, which I will explain what this does more in depth here in a second. But real quick, I want to note that doing this does not prevent you from coming back and editing this mission. Your editor save is still here. You can still come back and make changes. You just also have a completed version of the mission saved on your computer as a separate file. So if we go ahead and close the Eden editor real quick, I'll show you the main feature of this. So you can of course go to single player in the scenarios, or you can go to multiplayer and then you can go to host server and you can fill out this information and hit host server and you can choose your mission. So whenever you export a mission to single player or multiplayer, it will show up in these lists. If you export it to multiplayer, it will of course be under host server. If you export it to single player, then it will be under the scenario tab for single player. So like I said, it doesn't prevent you from creating new changes, but it gives you a finished file format of the mission that you can launch through servers and single player. I don't use this feature a ton because there isn't a huge reason for doing it because you can launch your mission in single player and multiplayer through the editor. But one big benefit is it compresses all the files into a single SQF file. So a basic Eden editor save creates a file on your computer that has any of your scripts and mod data and the actual world data and all these different things in one file. Whenever you export it, it compresses all these into one single SQF file. So you can transport that SQF file instead of having to have several different text documents for the entire mission. Now, another problem with this is it makes editing it very hard because you can't really go back and edit that single SQF file or is you can easily go back in and edit the file from an Eden editor mission. But they're saved completely separately and you will have the files for both. So it's really up to you whether you use this feature or not. As I said, I personally don't use it much, but it can be helpful. 
that's pretty much everything for this guide. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.